Hello and welcome to the fire. Get cozy because I got quite a story for you. It's about a problem player who went crying to his ODM who is very mm, special as well. Player runs crying to ODM for help. R slash RPG horror stories posted by own underscore ad underscore 7373. I had this problem player. This guy didn't get along with anyone in the group and had multiple tantrums at the table. He is an adult. My other players wanted to kick him out of the group, but I naively wanted to give him a second chance. I drew up a list of new rules that address the issues. Everyone but the problem player agreed to them. One rule I added was something we had agreed to before starting the campaign. I didn't have a problem with evil PCs. I think they can be fun, but I knew that this particular group, minus the problem player, didn't want that. So before he even asked to join the game, I told him that the PCs had to be good or neutral alignment. He agreed, until the first session where he became a murder hobo and caused fights among the PCs. The other characters hated his character and there was no logical reason for him to stay in the group. He often argued with me over rules because I'm a woman and obviously don't understand D&D. He would insist that I look up the rules in the middle of the game and waste a bunch of time. Often, I was right, so I told him that in the future I'll make a quick decision on any rules they have questions about and then after the session I will look it up for future sessions. I asked that unless both players agreed, there shouldn't be PvP. I added this rule mostly to protect his character as the other PCs wanted to murder him in his sleep. I added what I thought was a common sense rule, no rape. But then the email had a whole paragraph on how player discomfort is okay. The next day, I received this email from his old DM, who I met in person and knew his name so I don't know why he went by an alias. I quickly kicked the problem player out of the group and D&D is much more enjoyable. To whom it may concern, you may refer to me as Critical 20. I have received a copy of the contract you are putting on your players and see a few discrepancies. I have been a DM for five years and have been in a party run by a DM with 10 years under his belt. I have witnessed sessions by DMs who have been going at it for at least 30 years or more as well. So I feel as though I have some authority to speak on the matter. I have had to learn many things the hard way. I have learned that D&D is not simply a game, but an experience. I think that many of the things on your contract are going to restrict the players severely. My first point of concern is that by definition, a contract has to be agreed upon by all involved parties. I have been told otherwise. Forcing rules on your players without them seeing why you have enforced them is dangerous and can lead to a party disbanding and the closure of a campaign. I have seen this before. Players have left due to a rule change I have made. It is a very dangerous path to go down and implementing so many rules at once is dangerous. First, let me start off by saying what I agree with in your contract. Unannounced dice rolls should always be re-rolled. That is a good rule to implement and to hold on to for as long as possible. 
it is good to split treasure between the party. However, you cannot force this and have to let players keep what they find. They will not want to part with that one magic item they have found, even if it benefits another party member more. Often, they will use that as leverage over the other party member. You need to let them do that. Also, when they have decided you should not use your power to overrule it. Secondly, I must go into what I disagree with in this contract. Dice rolls against PCs should be allowed, as it allows for more character interaction, even if that action is hostile at the time. It will also let your players stay in character more than they normally would. I have found that some people are better at staying in character than others. Some simply need a spark to trigger their role-playing. Roles against other players can often be this spark. Along with this is player versus player, or PvP combat. You cannot force a party to get along, but after many sessions and adventures together, after they have saved even the party members they hate the most, they might get along. You must remember, however, that you cannot force it and must let it go by its due course. By forbidding PvP, you can save someone from an additional character creation session, but you may also forbid them the opportunity to learn from it. As I said before, D&D is an experience and not simply a game. Next, I would speak about your words on player discomfort. Most players, when they feel uncomfortable, will not share this knowledge, and if they do, they will not wish to announce it to the party. I have found the best way to deal with this is to let the session play out and invite the players to speak with you afterwards, in private, about what made them uncomfortable, and then to not implement that in the future. Keep in mind though, using plot that makes a player or two uncomfortable, or that they feel strongly about, is a good way to pull players into the game. I do this sometimes, as one of my specialties is lines of morality. By implementing the individual player's lines of morality, I can pull any of them into the story at any time. I can move the plot in whatever direction I choose. I could even steer the players away, if need be. Times when players are uncomfortable are the times they will remember more. I would also like to address the issue that is the conundrum and the primary discrepancy of this document. Character, party, fit. I will start by saying that no alignment should be prohibited. My father, who has played D&D since a year after its creation, once had an evil party member. Please keep in mind that his campaigns were 10 years long. The PC in question kept going behind the party's back and making things harder for them while not appearing to be evil. They only found out once he was turned to stone. My father remembers this because the evil PC was played well and fit the party. I have had multiple evil PCs who have directly gone against the party and then made a new character. It helped the party grow closer together. I also have a concern about the two other rules that make this one obsolete. I refer to Honor Amongst Thieves and Murder Hobos. Those two rules and your clarification on them allows an entire party to become evil, let alone a single PC. With Honor Amongst Thieves, I again restate that you cannot force your party to trust each other as it will tear them apart. And with Murder Hobos, I greatly disagree with the allowance of this rule. D&D is an experience, so by removing consequences, you have removed a great deal of the experience and a chance for the players to realize that every decision that they make bears meaning. 
Though this may seem off topic, it in fact is not. My favorite game in the world is Mass Effect 2. The combat system is terrible. The world is usually quite strange. So why do I love it? Everything you do has meaning. If I were to kill someone in Mass Effect 1, they would not be there in the second or third game. Each and every decision you make carries over to the sequels. That is why the game is amazing. If you take away that weight, you might as well have another railroading first person shooter like Halo. Halo is still fun, but it's simply not the same. The difference between D&D and murder hobos can be summed up in one word, Munchkin, as that is why Munchkin was made. Lastly, I would discuss your policy on rule debates. As a rule traditionalist myself, I know what you speak of personally. However, I have come to disagree with you on this matter. Sessions take a long time and the flow may not always be perfect. However, the players need to understand those rules. That is why they ask. D&D is a very balanced game. I understand house rules and all that, but house rules are meant to be permanent. A single rule clarification that would only take a few minutes to look up could change the course of an entire session. Therefore, I would recommend that you look up the rules as they are brought into question. Remember, the DM is simply a narrator. The term of DM and GM give a much larger sense of power than is intended as the word master is often deceiving. Gary Gygax, co-creator of D&D, meant it to be called the narrator, thereby limiting the power of the DM. When I DM, I view it as a service to my players and am glad they wish to explore the world I have made. Though. I do jokingly refer to myself as a cosmic force, I in fact let the party influence the story more than I influence it. While I know that they will not question my decisions all the time, I usually make sure they do not have to. I allow them to do things that are not necessarily by the book even though I am a rules traditionalist. Let me also say that as a prospective author, my campaigns would be very different if I had written them as a book instead of a campaign. In short, just consider your part in the campaign. Would you change your plot due to the actions of the party? Would you put the party before the world you have labored over tirelessly week after week and year after year? If you answer no, to either of these, then your priorities are misaligned. In closing, I have been asked to invite you to one of our sessions. They take place on Fridays at 6 p.m. and usually go till 11. This request was made so you might see how I DM. I do not say this in arrogance, only in difference of experience. Critical 20. P.S. If you choose to take everything I said with a grain of salt, then it is up to you. Just remember that I've been where you are, and I offer only my advice and experience. What the heck? Are you serious? I really hope this story was made up, but it might just be true because I myself have encountered people with big enough self-inflated egos that would pull off something like this. Now that guy is the very definition of a gatekeeping neckbeard. Ooh, jeez, it just really gets me that some people don't have the self-awareness of just how obnoxious they are. Uh, I mean, mm, I feel that everyone deserves at least a second chance, but I'm also going to say that OP did the right thing 
by kicking out the problem player, especially if that player has the same playstyle as Mr. Critical 20. It doesn't matter how long you've been playing the game, that doesn't automatically make you better at it, so take that pretentious stick out of your rear. Ugh. I mean, can't you just not with that unsolicited advice? No one cares. And that's our story. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more future content. Also, if you would kindly follow the socials posted in the description, that would be amazing. As always, be good, be great, be awesome.